Hello again everyone, I'm Dave Frampton and this is Sapiens. Um, so yeah, I've been really busy the last few months working on a really big update. So in this video I want to show you a bunch of the new kind of stuff that I've been working on and talk about like why I decided to do that too and, and my sort of thought process behind it and where I'm, where I'm heading to from here. Um, so the first thing that I really wanted to talk about is the new look, the new shaders, the new graphics and textures. Um, yeah, as you can see, the graphics, the, the terrain has a little bit more detail now, it has a bit of roughness. I'm using normal maps, the rocks have a little bit of roughness to them that they didn't have before. Um, it's subtle and I think it's working really well. Now, I didn't really have to do this uh, before. I, I you know, the reason I hadn't done it was that I was sort of getting away with it. I thought, um, I know that some people felt that it really was lacking, that it looked um, too simple or something, but I thought the style was all right. But anyway, uh, I've decided that I do need to do this. And really the reason is to differentiate between different materials. So really what triggered it was that I added uh, granite. So I've added quite a few different kind of rock types. I've got, we've got, we had red rock and green rock before. Um, we've now got copper and tin, which I'll talk about a little bit later. That's some new stuff that's um, in the new update. Uh, we've also got, um, yeah, granite. We've got some lapis. I think there was a little bit over here somewhere. Yeah, a little bit of lapis. We've got um, sandstone. So there's a, a red sandstone, yellow sandstone, blue sandstone. So they'll all sort of appear together in, in, in um, different layers on, on cliffs and things. Uh, and yeah, we've even got a few other things, marble and stuff too. Um, so when I was adding those new rock types, I just felt that they looked a bit off. Um, they didn't really, it was just too hard for me to actually make granite look anything like granite with the way that the shaders were working. And I really just decided it needed a bit more um, texture, you know, a bit more roughness. And so uh, I looked at ways of doing that and I, and I came up with this. Um, it uses a sort of hexagonal roughness map on most things. There's a few different, different variants. Um, we've got sort of special textures for things like thatch um, and hay. Oh, we just discovered wood, wood building. Um, yeah, and also metals. Um, so these these look a little bit metallic. These ores they almost almost look un, unnatural, and I, I think that's kind of intentional. I want that, wanted them to look different. Um, and we do have bronze ingots too, which I'll show you a bit later. But so yeah, I had to basically look at all all of the texturing and completely redo it and assign UV maps to all the different models and do a whole lot of just content creation work and Blender and things. Um, redoing some of these and, and all sorts of stuff, but trying to also not mess it up for people. So I didn't want to change things so drastically that your current worlds look a whole, you know, look so different. Um, and yeah, that was a bit of a challenge, but I, I think I've got the balance right. I think it looks visually just better overall. Um, and in certain situations, it looks a lot better. And there's really, you can really tell different textures apart now where you, you just couldn't before. Um, things like, you know, the, the limestone or the mud brick um, look, you know, looks very, very rough. Uh, we've got limestone over here. So we've, we've built, you didn't used to be able to build out of limestone, but we've got limestone tiles, limestone walls. And so it's just really allowed me to actually create these materials um, in ways that, that I just couldn't have done before without all of that work. So, um, so yeah, big improvements there. Um, yeah, so these are made using a new mechanic of um, stone chiseling. So that's quite a major new mechanic and I spent quite a bit of time working on that. Um, you can now craft stone chisels uh, and these can be used to cut um, soft rock blocks. So we can um, chisel out from the sandstone and limestone and we can create uh, blocks of stone. They can be then turned into tiles, which can be used to make the tile roofs, or they can be used, the blocks can be directly to, to build walls. Um, so this was on the roadmap to actually add new building components and roof types. So that's that was one of my focuses for this update. Now the, uh, when I looked at building stone block, um, stone block walls and things, I, I was trying to figure out how to balance it. It didn't make a lot of sense for you to just pick up these rocks and start placing them. I just thought that that would be um, just too easy, really, compared to other methods of building like mud brick and stuff. Um, so I had to make it a little bit more challenging. And I thought I would split it out, because um, when I sort of looked at the history uh, of, of building, you know, in, in reality, 
We've got the pyramids that were built thousands of years ago using simple tools um, by just just cutting blocks out of out of the cliff face, basically. Um, and, and I wanted to replicate that. But I also thought it would be a good idea to differentiate between soft rocks, which can be easily chiseled by even rock tools, and harder rocks. So you can you can build granite structures or um, you know, marble structures or things out of, out, or just rock structures out of hard rock. Uh, but you will need bronze chisels to be able to do that. So it kind of creates that progression in the game, which is always important. Um, so as well as the new material types for building with, we've also got a bunch of new things to actually build. We've got all these different roof types. Uh, there's a few of these being used over here. Um, so you've got sort of internal corners and things. You can make, make corners in your buildings now. Um, and you've got, yeah, lots more control with these um, smaller, where are we like, it's, you know, these little little roof sections like this that can you can poke in little spaces. Um, so you should be able to pretty much make uh, a roof for any any kind of shape that you've got. Uh, this took a lot of work, a huge amount of work, and probably you know the majority of the time that I've put into this update has been spent just working on models, um, and it's been a bit painful, if I'm being honest, <laughs> but uh, hopefully worthwhile. I think I think it'll it'll allow for a lot more sort of creative um, opportunities, you know, ways different varieties with things that you can build and stuff. So um, yeah, I hope you guys like that stuff. Um, and also, yeah, we've got triangular floors, which we didn't have before. Um, so triangular floors will allow you to make things like, I guess, uh, circles. Um, so you can make little, uh, let's just do that. Make a floor like that and then put up some, uh, let's put up some walls like this. Um, I did want to add a door and a 2 by 2 I might add that at some point, because at the moment we can't really have a door here, unfortunately. Um, but you could connect it up to a larger space and open it up and stuff. Um, we do then have the thatch roof triangles and inverted triangles, so you can use those to uh, make little huts like this. Um, and yeah, you can make quite large, you can use all these shapes to make quite large buildings as well. Um, you know, it just, it's, it's a lot more flexibility that you didn't have before um, and I'm pretty, pretty happy with how that's all come together. Um, so when I'm going and adding content and working on um, new features and things, I like to kind of keep all of the quality of life stuff uh, going as well. So I'm always working on little improvements. If I see them doing silly things with the AI, I try to fix them and, uh, you know, always fixing stuff. Uh, one thing that I thought would be very useful now that we've got things like the thatch blowing away in the wind, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, is that you can now go rebuild. So it's a new command that allows you to completely replace the, um, the structure with something else entirely. Um, yeah, so for each different kind of kind of structural thing, um, you can just swap it out for something else that uses different materials. Um, and in fact, yeah, for walls, you can, you've got all the different wall types with doors and windows and stuff. So you, and you can just basically hit a hit rebuild and they'll come and dismantle it and then create a build order and start building it with the new stuff. Um, and also, so this is a thatch wall large window. The other thing that you could do is say, oh, actually we want to rebuild it just without a berry branches or something like that. So you can sort of get the materials out and replace them with things. So I think that's a nice, useful little quality of life feature here. Incidentally, I haven't didn't actually mention, but this is this is red stone. These, these craft areas with, were just made with red rock instead of normal rock, um, and that's a way that you can sort of color code things to, to you know for your own benefit or for um, decorative purposes. It doesn't change the way these work functionally, but they just uh, look a bit different. Now, so over here we are currently researching um, bronze, so that will uh, come soon enough. I can't really see what's going on in there, but she's just got a bit of copper and tin in there, uh, and a crucible, which is something else that you'll need to, to craft in order to make metal. Um, so yeah, as I said, with bronze, really the reason that I added it was because I wanted a harder tool for chiseling hard rock, um, you know, so that was, that was the instigator for, oh, I think we're going to need bronze. Um, so I couldn't just do that though, just have bronze chisels. So there are now a number of different tools that we can work with. So I'll, I'll come back to that once she's, she's finished researching it and we can explore bronze a little bit further. Um, but while we're waiting for that, uh, maybe I'll talk a little bit about mulching and compost. 
Um, so that was another feature that I thought it was good to get in uh, at this point. Now what's happening is this this tile here, you can see it's just slightly lighter shade of grass and if you look down the bottom left it is soil and this is rich soil. So before this was all rich soil, this was an area that just had rich soil everywhere. But because this is a farming area and we've been taking wheat from the area, as you harvest or clear um, tiles, so even clearing will do it as well, it slowly degrades the quality of the soil. Um, and uh, I think it's set to about 20 harvests. So for, for this here, like each of these wheat plants, if you harvest it, that's one harvest. Um, actually, I can't, remember, I can't remember the exact number. It might, might be 10, but um, somewhere between 10 and 20 times uh, is enough that it will then actually degrade it fully into the, the next step down. Um, and so rich soil becomes normal soil, normal soil becomes poor soil. Um, and that's about it. Uh, but you can actually then reverse this damage. So we can now go in and we can say we would like to mulch it. Um, so I've researched this before. You have, you have to find something that you can mulch with, like some manure or something. Um, and there's no one actually assigned to mulching. So we'd better uh, just do that. Uh, you you can do that. Um, actually, so while well, I'm in here, uh, this is new, these pluses. Um, so Piwa is strong, and so all of the tasks that have um, a benefit for if, if the sapien is strong will show the, the plus and show in that tooltip that it's because, because they're strong that they get a plus. Um, and that means that they'll be faster at it. So it's worth trying to assign people to, to jobs that match their traits. Uh, but anyway, so she's brought some uh, compost yep some compost over and she's just digging it into the ground and now this is fully restored to rich soil again um, and that does affect how fast things will grow and what the yields are uh, you know certainly like the amount of grass that you get when you clear is more for rich soil things like that um, so I thought that was a nice mechanic I think you know it's quite realistic and it's also you know it is something that happened um, that people you know discovered that they could enrich the soil um, so that compost came from me researching some rotten stuff and if I, once I've researched it, I can then build a compost bin. It's another new thing. Um, so yeah, we can we can build compost bins. Um, and that just means you, you really only need one of these in, in any kind of area. Um, they'll just, anything that rots in the storage area, they'll just bring it over and pop it in here. And then every, every so often, once there's enough stuff there, it'll just pop out some compost and then you can use that to re, redo your, um, the soil. So I think that's a nice little mechanic. Uh, you can also gather, you'll find manure just lying around like when, when mammoths and alpacas and stuff come through they'll leave manure behind them and uh, you can go and pick that up and, and use it to um, improve your soil. Okay so now we have a windstorm active so I just kind of cheated to make this happen. So the windstorms will happen every couple of years maybe on average. Um, it does sort of depend a bit like it's fairly random. Um, and yeah, it's a severe weather event. It's, it's an extreme event that will cause you some issues that you have to kind of respond to and prepare for. And yeah, it'll be the first of quite a few different events and things that are going to happen. Not necessarily just weather, weather events, but things that um, yeah can cause some troubles. So before in Sapiens, there used to be little um, little gusts of wind every now and then, so sort of things used to swirl around a little bit. But there was no real direction or anything. Whereas now, you can see the rain is actually falling sideways, the, the trees are all leaning in the same direction, the particles from the fires and stuff, you know, the fires are getting really blown by the wind. Um, and so yeah, I did, did all that kind of work to make everything everything work with a wind direction. That The wind direction can change over time too, so it's not always the same. Um, and so yeah, not only graphically is a windstorm interesting, but it also causes some uh, gameplay things too. So the, these guys are all, I mean, partly because there's not much to do, but also they, they are seeking shelter because of, because of the storm. Um, the fires will blow out and sapiens will have to come in and light them again, so that's, that's something to watch out for too. Um, and thatch will actually blow away, so you'll actually have um, damage to some of your thatch structures. Uh, and it's only if they're uncovered, so you, generally your, your walls should be okay. Um, that's probably counted as, as under cover because it's underneath, underneath this. But your roofs are going to start uh, losing the odd bit of thatch. It's not a major issue, like it's not really going to wreck your game or anything, so don't panic about it. 
Um, and you do have the new rebuild thing, so you can go in and, and replace things now uh, if you want. So you don't, you're not stuck. You know, you don't have to dismantle things and then snap them back and stuff just just to make it a bit easier to upgrade things if you want to. But yeah, I mean, really, all that's going to happen is you're going to have. Um, you know, it'll look like it'll be in this state like this. You know, you're going to lose a bit of your thatch, um, and then stuff underneath is no longer protected. So you might find that things. Oh, in fact, it's just happened. Can I zoom to that. Yeah, so that's just lost one there. But it's it's queued up a build order, um, and someone will come and and patch that up. In fact, here we go. Um, so it's not like it's not the end of the world. It, you know, it's not going to totally um, totally mess you up, and you don't have to worry if you've got a few thatch structures around. Uh, but it does mean that you probably want to have a few thatch builders on hand, a bit of extra hay lying around just to just for repairs in the case of a windstorm. Um, and it's not just wind that will cause uh, damage as well. Um, mud brick can now be damaged by heavy rain, so that's something else to watch out for. Um, you might want to replace some of your mud brick structures with um, some beetroot just getting blown away. Um, yeah, replace some of your mud brick structures with new stone block structures and things too. Um, but again, if you've just got a few mud bricks lying around and, and a sapien or two assigned to mud brick building, you'll probably be fine. Um, so yeah, as you saw, the beetroot uh, just blew here from over there. So they actually, things will get blown off, um, blown out of it. There's bits of hay, uh, sorry, wheat that have been ripped out here and are, are blowing around. Um, so it causes just a general kind of mess, a bit of chaos. Um, things can get blown out of your storage areas, uh, but if that happens, they'll, the items will get a store order attached to them, so they'll get your sapiens will automatically go and kind of put them back again. Uh, but it just, you know, it gives a bit of extra work that that kind of will keep sapiens busy for a bit, um, and uh, they can get injured by flying items as well. Um, so you've got to watch out, especially uh, around coconut trees and things, you, you know, things can fly out and actually hit your sapiens, injure them. Um, and then, uh, in fact, I think, I think she was injured by, injured by something. Oh, it was a, a blown, bone flute actually blew out of here and, and hit her while she was sitting over here. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, a little bit more kind of interesting things going on when there's windstorms and uh, it's a neat kind of little part of the game I think. Uh, so while the windstorm is happening we actually managed to discover bronze, um, here it is here. So uh, as I said, um, you know I've, I've spent a lot of time on all the textures and stuff and, and shaders and materials. Um, part of the reason for that also was that I added bronze and found that uh, you know metal didn't didn't look so great um, and I think it fits in quite nicely now and uh, has a good good kind of it's you know it's quite realistic looking but I think it still suits everything else so yeah I'm pretty pretty happy with how it's looking. Um, so we can now craft bronze tools. Uh, we're gonna need a hammer though We've managed to make bronze, but we don't, and we can make bronze at ingots. Let's just make a couple more of those. Um, but we're going to need a hammer to actually. Oh, stone hammer head. But yeah, we're going to need a hammer to actually uh, create some of these tool components. So we'll get that happening. Um, so bronze tools, other than this, so the the bronze chisel will allow us to chisel out more advanced rock types and open up kind of granite walls and granite floors and stuff which is um, cool for kind of the late game at the moment. Um, the other bronze tools all last longer and uh, are usually a bit faster at what they do so you can make sort of bronze hatchets and, and spears and, and picks and things too. So yeah that gives you something to aim for for the later game. And aside from all of this stuff there's also lots of little little changes, changes to the AI, like there's lots of improvements to the performance, especially in the late game. So there were issues if you had really large tribes, very busy, sometimes they'd sort of stand around quite a lot or move, rubber band around, time would sort of skip and things, especially if your um, CPU was getting a bit overloaded. Um, so I've made quite a lot of optimizations and fixes there to, to help with that. Um, I've changed some of the camera controls and things. So now when you build, it actually raises your maximum height limit. Um, so some people have built some really huge like pyramids and stuff, massive structures. Uh, so you can now actually just carry on going up and up and up and up. The more that you build up, the higher that you'll be able to go. Um, so that's going to be a nice, nice feature there. Uh, we've got things like storage areas can now have a um, maximum, maximum limit. Uh, so you can you can just say okay we don't want we don't want too many although actually I, I probably need to make it so you can say 
five rather than 30. Oh, yeah, a couple of things still, still there. Um, but yeah, so that will allow you to do things like if you set up a, um, a storage route, you could say, we need some flax twine over at this other mining base for whatever reason. Um, so we could say, yeah, let's send some over, but we don't want heaps. Um, so let's just let's just make sure that we get um, just only filled one percent. So we only want a small amount of twine coming over here. Um, so that's that's going to be useful, I think, for especially for spread out bases and things. Um, and yeah, there's been lots of other little things too. I, th I think just one other thing I wanted to point out, we've got um, the option now to change that uh, reticle, is it called? Uh, so you can you can configure this if you want to. So uh, yeah, it's just, I, I think some people found, found it a bit hard to see the dot. You can just make a bigger dot or, or make a smaller dot or whatever you want to do. Um, so yeah, there's some new options there for that. Anyway, so I think that kind of sums up 0 0.4 uh, mostly. Um, yeah, we've got another windstorm now. Normally you would never get a windstorm so close together like this, but I've got a debug mode to just make constant windstorms um, just from, you know, so I could show you a windstorm basically. So yeah, I left that on and it's uh, just starting another one. Things are starting to get a bit wild. But yeah, we'll see how this update goes. Uh, I suspect I'll probably be just working on minor kind of additions for, a, you know, small uh, bug fix updates for a few weeks after the release. Um, and then we'll be going on to 0 0.5. And I think that's probably going to be focusing on multiplayer and on the sapiens themselves, on trade and interactions and things. So that's, that's where I'm headed next. But yeah, overall, uh, as far as sort of my working on this game goes and where I'm at with it and stuff and, and the reception and all of that, um, it's just it's just perfect. It's really, really good. Um, I'm feeling uh, really kind of motivated. I'm enjoying the game. I'm enjoying playtesting, which is always a good sign. Um, and I've still got, you know, so many ideas. So there's just lots and lots of potential going forward too. Um, and yeah, the, the structure of all the code and the kind of scalability of everything is good too. Um, you know, with block heads, when I, I, was, I was in such a rush to get it out the door that I made lots of terrible um, decisions about you know, refactoring and things and it turned into a big spaghetti pile of mess. Um, and that's not the case with Sapiens, uh, despite what some of the modders might say. Um, <laughs> it's actually, you know, it, it's good. I'm, I'm able to really uh, add stuff relatively quickly um, without too much hassle. So, uh, yeah, it's in a good place. So anyway, I will leave this windy, windy environment. And uh, if you want to check out all the new stuff, then uh, without waiting too long, then you will be able to tomorrow uh, by switching to the unstable branch. Um, just be a little bit careful with that. You might want to back up your saves first, um, but it should be OK. We've had a fair few testers giving it a good once over. Um, and otherwise, uh, it will go live on the main branch at the end of next week and it will also be going on sale too if you haven't picked up the game yet so um, there's a couple of things getting blown out of the storage area there they get wow that's really going did it go all the way still going what is it what is it oh some flax seed man that went a long way <laughs> anyway uh thanks for watching and yeah sorry that i'm not doing so many devlogs i'll try to i'll try to do a few more um, and we'll see you again next time. Cheers.